I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This great leap was made possible by one key innovation in history, the V-2 rocket. Built during World War II by German engineers, the V-2 was the forerunner of intercontinental ballistic missiles, devices that profoundly shaped the global narrative during the Cold War by relentlessly threatening nuclear annihilation. However, the V-2's creators, led by Werner von Braun, saw the rocket not as a weapon of war, but as a gateway to the stars. Do you believe that the thousands of scientists, engineers, and craftsmen who labored for decades envisaged in their loving work and ingenuity the diabolical ends to which their creations were often put? I tell you no, gentlemen. Those men were animated by secret visions of reaching into the heavens. As the first ballistic missile, the V-2 led to the creation of ICBMs. But, more importantly, it is the ancestor of all modern space rocketry, the bridge between mankind and the universe. After World War I, the Treaty of Versailles prohibited Germany from manufacturing heavy artillery. Seeking to circumvent this restriction during Germany's rearmament, the Department of Ordnance set up an experimental facility on the Baltic island of Penamunda in 1938. This state-of-the-art complex produced a series of large, liquid-fueled rockets under the direction of the brilliant young Werner von Braun. The grim nature of World War II hastened development, and in 1944, the culminating rocket was designated the Vengeance Weapon II, or V-2. It was ordered into mass production at Mittelbau Dora, a brutal slave labor camp near Buchenwald. One of the interesting things when you look at the d development of the V-2 itself is that roughly 20,000 people died in the process of manufacture of that. Uh, so this was done by slave labor. The V-2 was the first large-scale rocket to utilize liquid fuel allowing the engine to propel the rocket through the stratosphere to suborbital flight. Upon re-entering the atmosphere, it would come down onto its target at three times the speed of sound, five times faster than the swiftest British interceptor fighter. This astounding velocity made the rocket terrifyingly lethal. It could not be heard until after impact, destruction was multiplied by the sheer kinetic force, and it was impossible to shoot down. The great innovation of the V-2 was its fusion of disparate elements of rocket technology. Multi-injector combustion chambers, liquid fuel, supersonic aerodynamics, and advanced gyroscope-controlled exhaust vanes all combined on an unprecedented scale. V-2 was a really big rocket by comparison to everything that came before. I mean, it was a huge scale up. Uh, and here was a leap to something that was over 55,000 pounds of thrust and was 46 feet tall. So just in sheer size alone, it was a dramatic transformation in rocketry. 2,541 people were killed by the rockets, primarily in London and Antwerp. Thousands more were injured or had their homes destroyed. However, it was too little too late. Germany's war-ravaged infrastructure could not support the scale of production necessary to salvage the Third Reich. As the fall of Nazi Germany became inevitable, both the United States and the Soviet Union raced to seize the V-2 rocket technology, as it would provide a huge advantage in any future conflict. Werner von Braun and 117 other top scientists and engineers defected to American forces in hope of more lenient treatment. Additionally, American forces acquired key technical documents and 100 near-complete V-2s. The Soviets themselves secured a host of low-ranking engineers and a vast quantity of less important material. 
The competition to attain the V2 was but a microcosm that reflected the larger conflict brewing in the world, the Cold War. The V2 played an integral part in two aspects within the Cold War, the arms race and the space race. The V2's demonstrated military value prompted the United States government to invest in its further development producing the Redstone rocket in 1952. Although much improved, this rocket was virtually a replica of the V-2. Redstones mounted with thermonuclear warheads were deployed to West Germany in 1958, directly threatening the Soviet Union. As the arms race progressed, the superpowers created Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs, which had an operational range greater than 5,000 miles. For example, the Titan II, one of 22 ICBM variants developed by the United States, used liquid fuel and a gyroscopic sensor identical in principle to the V-2. Rampant military spending produced immense stockpiles of ICBMs, which threatened mutually assured destruction and created an enduring climate of fear throughout the world. Additionally, anti-tank missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, and cruise missiles would be nowhere near as mature and lethal without the V-2's demonstration of the capabilities of rocket weapons. Today, the arms race is over, but there are thousands of ICBMs still active as strategic deterrents, and the number of countries in possession of these fearful weapons continues to grow. Seeking to technologically surpass the West, the Soviet Union copied the V-2 outright and designated it the R-1. From this, a series of rockets was developed, leading to the R-7, which launched Sputnik, the first satellite, into low orbit in 1957. Utilizing the same rocket, Soviet Army Major Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space in 1961 a feat that astonished and alarmed the United States. Werner von Braun was at this time the director of the Marshall Space Flight Center and oversaw the creation of the series of massive rockets that culminated in the Saturn V. This rocket took the crew of Apollo 11 to the moon, where Neil Armstrong took his monumental step on July 21, 1969. The Saturn V, as well as the modern-day space shuttle, both used liquid oxygen as the cryogenic and oxidizing components of their fuel, just as the V-2 rocket pioneered. Perhaps more importantly, the V-2 showed that reaching the heavens was truly possible. The rocket which first came to life before and during World War II now occupies a sizable portion of man's thinking. As a weapon, as a tool for the exploration of cosmic space, and as a vast new challenge to many branches of engineering and science. Clearly the rocket has had this fundamental impact on our, on our lives in the 20th century and the 21st century because it, it both enabled the ICBM and other similar technologies for destroying the world and it enabled space exploration and space exploitation. Although it failed to change the outcome of World War II, the V-2 had a tremendous effect on history shaping and changing world events even to the present day. While tainted by war and slave labor, the legacy of the V-2 is not only that of destruction, but also of scientific progress. ICBMs constantly threaten nuclear annihilation, but telescopes have allowed us to explore the far reaches of the galaxy and beyond. Satellites carried into orbit by rockets have transformed our lives facilitating cell phones, global positioning systems, weather tracking, and instantaneous global communications, the very basis of the modern age. Three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff of Ares 1X. Some of the most magnificent discoveries and accomplishments of mankind are due to the rocketry that the V-2 inspired. And to this very day, in small steps and giant leaps, we press onward into the boundless reaches of the universe.